How's it going folks? It is Matt back with another crypto video and today's video is part two of the Coinbase listing requirements for Digibyte. We'll pick up where we left off at section 2.3 and make it through section four, the market supply. Now, part three will likely come this weekend as uh, when I get to section five and the market demand, I would like to have guests, a uh, guest on my show, Donald Porter, who is in Jamaica and uh, just see if he can give us some insight on the adoption of Digibyte in Jamaica. So before we get into all the uh, technicalities of the Coinbase listing, I have a very exciting announcement to make. Uh, as you know, I have recently been asked to join the Digibyte awareness team and basically just keep doing what I'm doing and making YouTube videos. Uh, but after I was asked to join, I wanted to buy a Digibyte t-shirt just to like show my support. You know, uh, I'm very passionate about the project and I think having a t-shirt uh, would, it just makes sense. Uh, so, but my problem was uh, I was looking, this is on Crypto Bon Tom's website, but I've looked on other websites as well, and nowhere can you buy a Digibyte Awareness Team t-shirt. So that got me thinking, and I came up with this idea, and I pitched it to uh, some other members of the Awareness Team. They liked the idea, so I got in contact with Crypto Bon Tom, and he made this wonderful website to uh, see my idea actually come to light and that is a t-shirt competition this will be the annual digibyte t fight competition of 2019 and being annual we have the opportunity to do this every single year and and uh, so what is the competition all about the overall objective of this competition is to engage the global community and produce three amazing t-shirts for the digibyte awareness team once the con competition has ended, the top three designs will be available for purchase on Crypto Bon Tom. So you may be wondering, like, uh, what's the point, you know? Since the Digibyte Awareness Team is not a closed group, it is a worldwide network of volunteers, meaning you don't have to apply to join. There's no job interview to join. Uh, anyone who supports the aims of adoption through education and awareness is by default a member of the Digibyte Awareness Team. So having a t-shirt for the Digibyte Awareness Team is kind of like a way for people who are advocates of Digibyte to show that you're a part of the team and show you're supporting the project. And you know, uh, having Awareness Team on your t-shirt may spark some conversation while you're out in public or with friends and aid in the adoption or awareness about Digibyte. So that was kind of my thinking behind the concept of this competition. So by getting involved, uh, as people upload their designs, they will be listed here. These are just some example entries. I, I entered this one uh, just to test the functions. Uh, if you are not entering a t-shirt, we need your participation to vote on the winning designs. And you do that by clicking this heart here. It says vote. So when you enter, you simply title your photo. I, I entered my title, good luck. Uh, you enter your email address. Your email address will remain private, so there's no need to worry about that. Uh, this email address here I made specifically for this video. So this is a, a useless email address. Hack it if you wish. Uh, but anyway, once you enter your title and email address, you just simply click on choose file, pick the design you want, and you click upload. And as soon as you upload it, you will receive uh, an email letting you know that it has been uploaded. And once Crypto Bonton has approved the design, uh, it will be listed on the website for everybody to see and vote on. So we need your participation. If you want a Digibyte Awareness Team uh, t-shirt, enter this contest. So what would I, or why would I enter and what is the prize? If you are a graphic designer, artist, or an amateur that is a fan of the project, entering the competition gives you the chance to make history as the creator of the first ever Digibyte Awareness Team t-shirt. Once the competition has ended on January 10th, 2019, the top three designs will be listed on Crypto Bantan, available for anyone to purchase. The grand champion will receive a free t-shirt of their design. They will receive 50% of the profit from the sales for three months. After the three-month period has ended, they will drop down to the 35%. Uh, so, you will, the grand champion will also receive a $50 gift card to use at Crypto Bantam, and they will have the possibility to feature future artwork on the website and, of course, receive royalties for any future artwork. Uh, so the creators of the second and third place entries will each receive a free T-shirt of their design, and they will earn 35% of the profit of each sale as a royalty payment. 
How long is the competition open? The competition will run from Jan or December 10th, 2018 through January 10th, 2019. During this time, designers can submit their artwork and uh, the global community can vote on the designs they like best. On January 10th, voting and submissions will end and the three designs with the most votes will be victorious. So there you have it. Uh, if you are looking for a Digibyte awareness t-shirt, awareness team t-shirt rather, uh, do it here. You gotta vote for the designs you like. Uh, once you vote, they will be posted on Twitter to help uh, spread the awareness of it. I'm definitely excited to see how this all works out and uh, thank you, Crypto Bontom, for making this happen. So let's get right to uh, the uh, Coinbase listing requirements. We left off on Section 2.3 uh, Governance. So in terms of consensus protocol and future development funding, uh, you know, I'm sure the core developers do have a structured process in place to test and implement updates. But because Digibyte is an open source project and being developed and supported by an unincorporated foundation, core team, and community, all of which are non-paid volunteers, there can never be commitments to dates in regards to deployment or commitments in regards to raising, rewarding, or allocating funds to accomplish future developments. Uh, so these need to be flexible depending on the generosity of the members involved. The beauty of this is truly and very large decentralized community is that development is not only depending on some foundation or core members only, there are plenty of community members working on development of the chain and building on top of the Digibyte technology. Everyone can do that. So continuity of the project is being guaranteed because it's true decentralization and open source. There is no permission required and success is depending only on acceptance. Now in terms of white paper, uh, Digibyte does not have a white paper, but that's not necessarily a bad thing. White papers are typically used for an ICO that is looking to uh, kind of pitch an idea for a product that they're going to make in the future. You know, Digibyte never started as an ICO, and they started with a working product from day one and have since created more use cases and more working products since then. So that's uh, why the white paper is not necessarily needed. So when we talk in terms of scalability, so this is a, an assessment of the network's potential barriers to scaling and the ability to grow and handle user adoption. Uh, Digibyte is hands down one of the most scalable projects out there. You know, every two years, the block size doubles, the speed doubles, and all scaling is able to remain on the chain. There will be no off-chain uh, transactions. There will be no lightning network needed. Uh, so as far as a roadmap, you can check out the roadmap on uh, the Digibyte Awareness Team website at digibat.org. They have everything that Digibyte has done from January of 2014 all the way up into present. Uh, you know, I'll just scroll through this quickly, and you can see how how it really took off in 2018. That this was 2017 up to 2014, but quarter one of 2018, you had all of this going on. Quarter two, quarter three, so far in quarter four. And they do have a list of future developments. But it's important to keep in mind, Digibyte is being developed and supported by an unincorporated foundation, all, all volunteer base, so they can never commit to dates to accomplish future projects. That being said, they've made a lot of progress on multiple uh, products so far this year. So back to the Coinbase listings. As far as uh, network operating costs, again, uh, you know, the block size doubles every two years, the speed doubles every two years, and it says here the resource consumption costs for validators and miners are not the main deterrence to participation. You know, if Bitcoin, uh, it's, its mining is consuming a lot of resources, and if Bitcoin is able to be listed, Digibyte would be as well. So when we take a look at practical applications, uh, are there real world implementations or full practical or future practical applications? Absolutely. You know, uh, looking at some that are already out, we have DigiID, and with their partnership through Anthem ID, it has uh, taken, or it's kind of like the next generation, you could say, of DigiID. And really, uh, DigiID eliminates the need for usernames and passwords, and the level of security it offers is really unmatched. Uh, they also have a partnership with VID. Uh, using the Digibyte blockchain, they will end fraudulent documents. Another uh, use case or uh, type of practical application. Uh, you know, we also have 
uh, Digi Cafe, which will allow the acceptance of Digibyte at the point of sale. Uh, there is Digi Assets. This was a tweet from Stephen uh, P. Kendall. But Digi Assets will allow for the creation of ICOs and the tokenization of assets on top of the Digibyte blockchain. That is coming very soon. And then uh, another thing to, that we have looking forward to is Vesti. And you know, we know Vesti is uh, the project of Jared Tate. And beyond what he has said, we don't know all the details about it. But he's bringing the blockchain to real estate. So the, the practical applications are absolutely there for Digibyte. And as far as uh, the type of blockchain, uh, you know, it is its own independent blockchain. It is similar to Bitcoin and Litecoin, but it is far superior in terms of speed, transaction cost, security, scalability, and decentralization. It's far superior to uh, the older technology. So as far as uh, legal and compliance, you know, uh, did you, as far as being listed as a security, Digibyte was never an ICO, so it won't be listed as a security. And in terms of compliance obligations, uh, you know, as far as being on a regulated exchange, Digibyte is already being listed on fully regulated exchanges in Europe. So as far as uh, the legality of it, I think it uh, absolutely meets uh, the expectations or requirements to be listed on Coinbase. Um, so when we look at market supply, the global market capitalization. Now, I took these numbers last night. I haven't checked them today, so it could have changed a little bit. But you know, it hasn't, it hasn't changed that much. As far as last night, uh, Digibyte's market cap was ranked 41. Uh, with a market cap of just over $112 million. Now, if it were to be listed on Coinbase, it would be the smallest market cap asset listed. But when we, look at, when we take a look at basic attention token, its market cap last night was $170 million. Zero uh, X, their market cap was $183 million. Uh, there's a market cap difference of less than $100 million between Zero X and basic attention token. So in terms of global market cap, uh, you know, I think it's, right on par with some coins that are already listed on Coinbase. So as far as uh, asset velocity, how easily can Digibyte be converted to another asset? There are many different places you can exchange Digibyte for different currencies. You know, the Exodus wallet comes to mind because I use that one uh, frequently. Uh, but there are certainly uh, change now, simple swap, I, I think. Uh, there's, it's, it's, there's a huge list of different ways you can convert the Digibyte coin into another asset. And as far as uh, circulation, uh, you know, through uh, the mining process, new Digibyte is minted. The supply will reach its market cap or its uh, cap of 21 billion in the year of 2035, and it will process around 280,000 transactions per second uh, in 2035. So, and, and all, of, all the tokens will be, it says, uh, a material amount of the tokens should be available to the public. And with Digibyte, you know, all of the available tokens or uh, coins will be available to the public. Uh, there, there's no company behind Digibyte. There's no company holding 60% of all the uh, supply like we see with uh, XRP or XLM or other projects out there. You know, uh, there's no company that has the majority of the supply. And that's a big deal uh, as far as remaining truly decentralized. So section 4.2, looking at global distribution, uh, where is the asset available to trade? Basically anywhere in the world. Uh, there's, it's on fully regulated exchanges in Europe. We saw its adoption increase in Turkey when uh, their economy was failing. Uh, its adoption is increasing in Venezuela uh, due to their hyperinflation. And uh, as I broke the story last week, Donald Porter from Jamaica, uh, there are places in Jamaica now accepting Digibyte as a form of payment. And certainly here in the United States, uh, you can access Digibyte across many different exchanges. You know, you can't use the excuse, I couldn't find an exchange to buy it on anymore. It says it's listed on many, many top exchanges. As far as total number of exchanges, I think it's over 80 at this time, uh, but you can check out digibat.org and they have a list of every single exchange that accepts or offers Digibyte and they detail like if there's fiat pairings, uh, that sort of thing. So as far as global distribution, the asset is not limited to a single geographic region and is available to trade on decentralized exchanges. I kind of already answered that as far as uh, talking about Turkey, Venezuela, Jamaica, the United States, Europe. Uh, you know, it's truly global. 
uh, fiat to crypto pairs. There are absolutely fiat and crypto pairings. I don't have a list of all the exchanges, but they are out there, and the list seems to be continuously growing. And um, exchange volume and distribution. Uh, you know, on, on coin market cap, you can kind of get these uh, uh, answers to this question here. And as far as distribution, there is five mining algorithms. You know, Bitcoin uh, and a lot of other projects have one mining algorithm, and, and Digibyte is distributed across five mining algorithms. So you know, all of the mining power of Bitcoin right now would only make up about 20% of the entire uh, mining ability of Digibyte. So that will wrap up this video, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, part three, it may come this weekend as far as market demand, and I am looking to get Donald Porter on as a uh, guest host of part three. Uh, you know, as far as uh, he's, he's, in, he's the guy in Jamaica that is uh, accepting Digibyte as payment and has kind of the inside scoop on that. So it would be interesting to see uh, what kind of demand Digibyte is bringing in Jamaica. You know, I'll have some other uh, talking points on that as well. Uh, but again, guys, if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to hit the subscribe button, hit the bell to get notifications, like it, share it. If you're an artist, upload your uh, t-shirt design to this competition. You only have 30 days to do so. If you are not uploading as a design, uh, remember to vote on the designs you like. You know, I'll, I'll remind you guys uh, quite frequently up until January 10th to uh, continue to vote on the t-shirts that are out there. So that will wrap it up. And I will see you guys later.